Jake Paul knocked out Tyron Woodley. Where do we go from here, y'all? He's done it again. But, was it an actual boxer he did this to? Ask that question. No, it wasn't. He's boxing people who cannot box. Legally, that should not be allowed. If he was to box somebody out in the street that that wasn't an actual boxer, he could get in trouble big time. But yet he's boxing people who can't box that are MMA fighters. This is what he's doing. This is what he's doing, y'all. Why are we allowing this? Why is the Boxing Commission allowing this? He's boxing MMA fighters, people who can't box. But he did call out Nate Diaz and Masvidal, so, you know, I do want to see that. I'm interested in both them fights. I want to see it. But he needs to box an actual boxer. Yeah. Then I'll be impressed. Because it's just looking like he's taking easy fights. Box an actual fucking boxer. Yeah. And if you win that, I'll be impressed. Hell yeah. But see, he's not doing that. He's not doing yeah. that. He's boxing people who can't box. It just blows my mind, man. Yeah, it's because they leak them just uh, a couple blows weeks before, like a week before the next month. How do you keep getting away with boxing people who can't box? At least Logan's yeah, boxing actual yeah, fucking they're boxers. They're hard. Jake Paul ain't even man enough to but, do it. If Tommy Fury would not well, have pulled out, they, Jake Paul would have been the, the one getting KO'd that The dirt that games night. are made for not Tyrone Wood. people with like them controllers, them wheels and stuff. Like they have set up. I swear, man, I'm getting, I'm it's tired of this Jake Paul shit. I'm tired of it. He's obviously proven that he's taking the sport very seriously, right? So he needs to box somebody with skill. Not these easy amateur fights. How does it make any sense to box someone who is known for grappling and ground and pound? Explain it to me. How does that make any sense? <coughs> That'd be like me playing fight night challenging Masvidal to a boxing match. <laughs> does that make any sense? Yeah. That'd be like me playing UFC and challenging Mike Tyson in the octagon. Does that make any sense? <sighs> It's a crazy world we're living in right now. Crazy era. It's exciting, Yo. but it's crazy. It's a crazy era we're in. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but Jake Paul, if you beat Tommy Fury, I'll be impressed. Until then, hell, if you if you beat if you beat Nate Diaz and Masvidal, I'll be impressed, but. <laughs> Still, you need to be an actual boxer <laughs> to be legitimate. You know I'm not tied in? Because you you're still not verified yet until you beat an actual boxer. And that's just what it is. I ain't sugarcoating the shit. That's what it is. Did you? Logan boxes actual boxers. Why? Because he wants to be a boxer. Well, we gotta go by the dump and shit like that, too. But, you know. And what gets me is Jake Paul immediately called out Masvidal also, and Nate Diaz, knowing Tommy Fury was next in line. And then I hear him say he's gonna take a vacation. 
You can't call people say, out and then man. talk shit and then take a vacation. Hell, no. They need to get them heat in their house because some coward have, shit. They gonna have water leaks everywhere if they don't. Man, I'm done talking about this. I'm so done talking about this. And it looks like I'm gonna have to make a video on Logan Paul facing mm -hmm. Mike Tyson because that's probably gonna happen. That's gonna be a whole new different story, but I never seen you with a little bit like that. So. I feel like it's gonna be a huge wake up call for Logan and Jake. Uh huh. Cause Mike Tyson's gonna knock Logan the fuck out, and they're gonna realize how serious this boxing shit right. really is. Like, like, dude, please. But you know what? <coughs> oh damn! My, oh, my damn! My, oh. It is what it Video is. It is what it is. Now, I'm going to hand it over to my cousin, and he's going to tell y'all his opinion on this Jake Paul. Shit. I ain't telling y'all shit. Huh? Just tell him your opinion on the Jake Paul shit. What Jake Paul shit? It's Jake Paul's how I bully. Okay. So. I already said what I <sighs> Here's what I think. I think Jake Paul versus Tyrone Woodley was ex ex went exactly how expected, at least in my opinion. I mean, in the first fight, he wasn't worth a damn Tyrone Woodley. And then this fight, he takes the fight on short notice, which should tell everybody, considering he didn't do shit last time, that he wasn't going to do shit this time. But I don't think we should be talking about Tyron Woodley versus Jake Paul. I think we should be talking about Tommy Fury versus Jake Paul. <laughs> because that is the question of the matter. That's, that's the biggest question right now. Would Jake Paul be able to perform against Tommy Fury and an actual boxer? That is the question that everybody needs to answer. And if everybody sits there and looks at it technically, I don't think so. If you look at Deontay Wilder, who is a professional boxer who has been known for knocking people out and has been undefeated for years until Tyson Fury, of course. Um, but he's not even looked at as a good boxer. He's looked at as a bad boxer. What happens normally when you put a good boxer in a ring with a bad boxer? Normally the good boxer wins nine times out of ten. Well, that's people trying to make Jake Paul seem like a good boxer, but if you put uh, him in a ring with Deontay Wilder, who would be in the same weight class, so that would be legit. Um, no, actually, I don't think they're going to be in the same weight class. Why wouldn't they be in the same weight class? Jake, Paul would be about Jake Paul's 225. Oh, I thought he was 200. No, he's gaining weight, bro. You not see him? Oh, yeah. He's, heavy, he's a heavyweight now. He's what you'd consider a heavyweight. He'd be going up against Anthony Joshua, Andy Ruiz Jr. He'd be getting knocked out by all these people. That's what people don't understand. These professional boxers that are losing to other professional boxers and losing every day are legends but would absolutely destroy Jake Paul. The, Jake Paul wouldn't even be able to fucking touch him. And Andy Ruiz Jr., he's a fatter guy. He's not a slim, fast, no, super no, fast he's guy. Weight, so well, nothing. well, when he beat Anthony Joshua, he was a pretty thick dude. So, he and he was pretty thick, you know. That's not that's, yeah. there's no pause to that. He was the thick boy. Uh you know, and what would happen if Andy Ruiz Jr. fought Jake Paul? Jake Paul would look like Deji fighting Floyd Mayweather, bro. Like, Deji's gassed out in the first round. Floyd's got another eight behind his back. I mean, it's just, it's, it's going to be a no contest. I mean, the thing is, Jake Paul doesn't fight real boxers. He's never fought real a real boxer. He is not a real boxer. I would consider him a boxer. I like you could not so consider him a boxer him nowadays. Boxer. Yeah, he'd be an amateur boxer. He'd be a he's not no professional he'd, boxer. He'd be a gold glove caliber. You know, and um, if Tommy Fury and Jake Paul fought, I, I, you know, I see Tommy Fury knocking his head off. To be honest, 
I mean, this dude's power, strength, he's faster, it looks like. He's more technical, he's... He, and from what I've seen, he just looks better in the ring than Jake Paul. And and here's another question you have to ask yourselves. In, in every single fight Jake Paul has ever done, who has pressured him? Nobody. Nobody has ever pressured Jake Paul. And it's not because they ain't got good shots on him, because Tyron Woodley in the last fight got a few good hits on him, but he never pressured him. Nobody has ever pressured Jake Paul. The moment Jake Paul feels is gonna, the moment Jake Paul feels any pressure, I guarantee you he's gonna crack and lose, because he's never even felt that before. I think, um, and you know, in my personal experience, yeah, you can spar all, all day long. But real boxing experience comes from in the ring actually fighting people in a real bout. Jake Paul's never had a real bout, in my so opinion. What do you feel about uh, Nate Diaz versus Jake Paul? I think Nate Diaz would lose. I do. Wow. Nate Diaz is how old? Late 30s. Late 30s. Ain't really fought in UFC for years. Yeah, that's not true. He's had, like, what, three fights in the past fucking six years, seven years? He had a fight not long ago, obviously, on him. Yeah, and that's, like, his third fight. And he's lost two of them? I mean, he would be, in my opinion, he he would put on a better fight against uh, Jake Paul. And don't even get me with Jake Paul and knock him out, because I don't ever see that happening. Has Nick Diaz ever been knocked out? Nate Diaz, no, I, don't I don't think he's ever been knocked out. Like what that about dude's. Masvidal and Jake Paul. I think Masvidal versus Jake Paul. Jake Paul would get fucked up. Now maybe he'd be a better boxer, but you gotta understand, like Masvidal, you know. He's literally the same age as Nate Diaz. I know, but Masvidal versus Nate Diaz, you see what happened. Uh, but Masvidal. Is a street fighter. He did a lot of street boxing. You know, he did a lot of boxing in the streets, just bare knuckle. You know what I mean? Like, this this ain't gonna be his like first rodeo in the boxing sport. He's he's done boxing before, and he and did it for years. Stands up and slugs. Yeah, him. and and that's and that's another thing. You know, he's not he's not in his fights. He's not going to the ground. He's fucking tagging your ass the entire time, standing up, banging. <laughs> I think Jake Paul versus Masvidal, Masvidal, Jake Paul looks a little better when it comes to actual boxing skill, but at the end of the day, Masvidal fucks him up, I think, because, I mean, it's just that power, so that speed, huh, I don't think Masvidal will get knocked out, no, I get boxing is a different sport than MMA, and that's another thing people got, also got to understand when it comes to looking at these fights, yeah. you know, People train in boxing, but in MMA, but when you're in boxing, that's all you train is boxing. Yeah. You know, you're going to train boxing, train boxing, train boxing. Yeah, in MMA, you're, you're going to train ground, clinch, yeah. ground, clinch, if boxing, you do, if you train and do kicks, one, if you train and kickboxing. Do one thing over and over and over and over again, eventually you're going to... Yeah, yeah, you're going to be, it's, you're going to progress fat, way faster than you would practicing this, 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 and that. It's like me. They, at my job, I literally, most of the time I'm doing nothing but wash dishes. I've done that for three months, and at first I wasn't the best at it, but now I'm, I'm literally a professional at it. Yeah, you know, professional dishwasher. Yeah. So, but like, you know, that, that's the thing, you know, repetitiveness. When you do something repetitively over and over and over, that's what you master. The only difference is the thing about Jake Paul when it comes to his boxing is that's what he's doing. When he's getting in the ring, he's copying his practice. He's not copying real fight experience. He's copying practice. That's what people don't understand. Uh, he's not, you know, when he goes in there, he's not doing something. He's copying what he was doing in a sparring and in practice, which means when he gets fought somebody where you're going to have to change up your game a little bit, 
Because in boxing, let's be real, you know, you, you, you'll, it's, it's strategy too. It's not just going there and fight and see who wins. It's, you got to have a strategy behind it. So when you go in there and fight and then you realize after the first two rounds that what you're doing ain't working, because what you're doing ain't going to work against everybody. Then when he realizes he's going to have to change what he's doing, there's two things that's going to happen. He's going to either stay the same and continue to lose, or he's going to change what he's doing and considering he's never had to change what he's doing in a fight before, he can just sit there and do the same thing the entire fight because nobody's testing him. Hey, uh, oh, let me talk. Point. So nobody's testing him. When he's got to change what he's doing in a fight, it's going to change the fight dramatically. And I think for worse for Jake Paul. Answer this question. Do you agree with boxers challenging MMA fighters to a boxing match? Do, um... MMA fighters challenging boxers to a boxing match? No, I'm talking about boxers challenging MMA fighters to a boxing match. Do you think the boxing commission no. should allow that? Uh, yeah, of course I think they should allow it. But I don't think they should be doing it. Like, when it comes to a boxer challenging an MMA fighter, if a boxer is challenging someone from another sport that they are not in, they should be challenging to their respective sport, not... So whoever does the call out should go to the other sport. You know, it looks like like when Conor McGregor called out Floyd Mayweather, he went to his sport sport yeah. and lost. But you know, I think he put up a best one of the best fights against a great all time great than a lot of people would. You know, I I, I, I think that's did good in the first round. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying, you know, but that's that's what you do. That's what everybody doesn't realize. You know, when you go into a Floyd Mayweather fight and he sits there and it looks like the other dudes win in the first three rounds. Yeah, that's all Floyd's plan. Well, she couldn't do that shit with Manny Pacquiao. He had to be on his well, keys that whole fight. Well, yeah, but like. In that fight, he but but let's be real. In that fight, he completely ran that shit. Like, although you know, let's say if five years before that, if they would have fought, I think Manny Pacquiao would have won. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't. So you can't talk about what if this would have happened because it didn't happen. He did fight him then. He waited till years after he was older, and it was just coming off an embarrassing knockout loss. Right, but but all things considered. In that fight versus Manny Pacquiao, a well-respected boxer, he did exactly what he needed to do and beat him. And everybody called bullshit on that, talking about how he ran away the entire... Well, that's every fight of Floyd Mayweather's. Really? Like, if you don't like the way Floyd fought in the Conor fight or the Manny Pacquiao fight, well, then you just don't like the way Floyd fights. That's, that's That is what it is. That's how he fights. And John Jones is kind of the same way, just a little bit more exciting. You know, he fights to win the bout. He don't fight to knock you out. He's not there to be flashy. Unless it's like a bitter robber. Yeah, unless it's like a bitter robber. But he's not, he's not there to be flashy and knock you out. He's there to get money and win. You know, he's there. It's a business, and that's what he looks at it as, and that's what he's doing. Um, he but... But when, when you go, no, of course not. But when you go to, like, Jake Paul calling out all these MMA fighters, I think that's all bullshit. Because if you're calling out people for a boxing match, it should be other boxers around your level, around your skill level, or maybe a little bit above what you would think would be your skill level. It's different if the MMA fighter is got experience and is actually real good with his hands like Masvidal. Right, yeah. Let's say let's say he is, he would have took Masvidal instead of uh, Ben Askren. What would have happened? I think we all know what would have happened. Masvidal would have fucked Ben Askren or fucked Jake Paul up. Masvidal already fucked up. Ben yeah, Masvidal already fucked up Ben Askren. Five seconds. Yeah, world record. But you know, like I said, he could have done that to anybody. You know, he and he done that in another fight after that. And he didn't get five seconds because it didn't take him five seconds to get to the other side of the thing. But, and, he, and he also tried to do the same thing to Nate Diaz. Yeah, he, but Nate he, Diaz he, moved out the way. Yeah, yeah well, he kind of faked it like he was going to. And then Nate Diaz, and Nate Diaz took the bait like. Yeah, <laughs> and then he just laughed across the room. Yeah, you know, stuff like, you know, that's funny. But, 
realistically, Mike Tyson versus, or not Mike Tyson, Miles Vidal versus Jake Paul instead of Ben Askren. I still, I believe, don't think, I still believe Nate Diaz can beat Jake Paul. No, I, Nate no. Diaz can scrap with the best of them. You're right. And, you know, Nate Diaz can scrap with the best of them, and I think he would look good. But I think, like I said, this fight would go to decision. I'm I'm quite positive of that. Nate Diaz versus Jake Paul would go to decision because Jake Paul, there's no way in hell he's gonna be able to knock out Nate Diaz, who's been hit so fucking hard in the head by Conor McGregor, so, by so many way harder hitters than Jake Paul, in so many more times than Jake Paul has ever landed. I mean, I'm if you, I mean if you see. Nate Diaz's fight is literally like he's a fucking zombie walking towards you. He's all bloody, beaten up, destroyed. It looks like he's one step away from falling on the ground and collapsing to death, and he's still fighting you like he was the first round. His his stamina and cardio is absolutely insane. Um, it's like you could be beat, you could have beat his ass for three rounds, and then fourth round you gassed out, and he he notices you gassed out, and he's like, "Come on, where's all that energy at now?" And he gives you a stock and slap, right. and starts unloading. Yeah, and he's done that before. Good because you know that's the thing. He did and that in the corner fight, in the later rounds, Connor gassed out, and he was like, "You ain't so, you ain't so impressive after all, boy." But. Okay, um, but yeah, you know, like Nate Diaz, like he he's scary, you know. Like it, it's literally looked like you pumped, you know. It's like the Terminator. You fucking shot this dude with every round you've got, and he's still fucking walking towards you. Like it's it's scary, you know. And I think, you know, like I said, it would go to decision. But I think Jake Paul, I think Jake Paul would win it in decision based on points. No, Nate Diaz would never let that happen. Yeah, but you got his street cred. And, and that's the thing, and that's and that's a that's a big another. That's this is the biggest next question that I'm I'm wondering. Is Jake Paul actually scared of a big fight? Like an actual big fight. I mean, he's the one that was going to fight Tommy Fury. Yeah, he was going to fight Tommy Fury. But, but he like only we've called stated. him out after Tommy Fury had that one bad fight against Anthony Taylor. And Jake Paul, I guess, was looking at but, like, look at this easy fight. But like, okay. I, all right. The people Tommy Fury has fought, they have a collective record of, I think I read, 12 and like 147. Yeah. Okay. Which is absolutely horrible. You know, he's fought, he's fought, fought these guys that collectively lost more times than he's ever seen fights. But at the same time, at the same time, this dude is being trained by Tyson Fury, hardcore. His family has already basically disowned this man from life if he loses. The pressure that's on Tommy Fury to win this fight, there's no way he loses. He is training his heart out to knock Jake Paul's head off, and I personally think he's going to do just that. You know, Tommy Fury ain't no chump. He's a big dude, and... You know, I, I've read something about people saying that he faked the rib injury or rib, rib break, so he didn't so uh, he didn't have to fight Jake Paul because he was scared. I don't see a world where he's scared of Jake Paul. Uh, he literally went backstage after the first Woodley fight and tried to get up in his face and fight him. I, I don't see a world where he's even a little bit scared. Of thing, Jake's of scared Jake of Paul. him because when they did the press conferences, Jake was via satellite. But yeah, he makes sure to show up in person to these MMA. Uh, right, to Woodley. Right, and if you look at, you know, oh, and also I think we need to talk about Jake Paul and steroids. I think that's a big thing that you know nobody's talking about really. This man is obviously on steroids. Logan is too. Well, yeah, but Logan is fighting professional boxers. I mean, 
he's fighting Mike Tyson. And if I was if I was going in a ring with Mike Tyson, I'd say, hey, hit me, hit me with some steroids. Like, goddamn, you're gonna be fighting Mike Tyson and fucking Floyd Mayweather. I'd be, I know I'd be walking in there about to get fucked up. Well, this dude's walking in a fight thinking he's about to walk home unscathed every time. Give me steroids and painkillers before I fight these guys. All right, but like, you know, Jake Paul's obviously ruining up. <laughs> like, look, just look at him from the Deji fight to now. He's, and he, and you can say he, he, he's not on steroids, but you know, there's a reason he's refusing drug tests every time. He's not, he's, the fight ain't going to be canceled because he's on marijuana. The fight ain't going to be canceled because he took some extracurricular cocaine. The fight ain't going to be canceled, but the fight will be canceled if he's found to be on, you know, steroids. That's why he's refusing drug tests. If he was legit, he would have no problem with taking a drug test, right? Right. Probably even on steroids for the veggie part, truth be known. But yeah, that's all I gotta say about it. And that's the video, y'all.